It's like probably like a little over a year, two years. This is the pre-interview, by the way. Not my answer. I've been rapping forever since so I was a little kid, but yeah, I started taking it serious like a couple years ago. Okay. Yeah, no better time than now, man. Seriously. What is it? We only getting older. Yeah. Unfortunately for all of us. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from uh, Minneapolis, but I came down here like 14 years ago, 13 years ago. Okay. It's been posted up. So you've been here for a minute. Yeah, I've been here for a minute. Uh, my dad lives down here, yeah, that's why I came down here. Okay. And so my so girl had a kid and I'm locked in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> So you said you started rapping when? You said a couple years ago? Yeah, like seriously putting shit out like two years ago. What made you get into the rap? I mean, I've always been rapping and shit, but uh, you know, well really I just didn't have money to really do the shit. And then, you know, I just was working and grinding, had some money. I was like, all right, now my family's good. Let's do this shit. So you grew up in Minneapolis? Yeah. Actually, Richfield and Minneapolis. Richfield's like a little suburb of Minneapolis, but pretty much Minneapolis. What is Minneapolis like? Pretty dope, man. It's uh, the capital there. Well, it's Minneapolis, St. Paul is the capital, but uh, Minneapolis is dope, man. This doesn't got really a, a good hip hop scene though, but uh, it's a cool city. Prince from there, and yeah, yeah, man. It's a pretty dope city. A lot of shit you can do downtown and whatnot. What kind of uh, like musical influences did you have out there, like growing up? Uh, I was always listening to Tupac, man. My stepdad, he always had Tupac playing, so that's probably my biggest influence. But uh, more recently. Probably <clears throat> Freddie Gibbs is real dope. I'm a big Freddie Gibbs fan. Anybody that's kind of lyrical, uh, like Andre 3000 is pretty dope. Dom Kennedy, uh, Currency, I fuck with. Anybody who's got some lyrical shit and then also got that little bit of swagger in there. Okay, okay, okay. So, you say you listened to a lot of pop back in the day. So, even as a kid, you always were into the lyrics. What was it about pop that really kind of just drew you in back in the day? I don't even know. I mean, what is it about Pac to everybody? He's just great, I man. His lyrics are, are, he's got a good message and shit. And, uh, man, I mean, clever and stuff, but uh, mainly probably like the message he's putting out. You know, a lot of a lot of dope messages behind the shit. It wasn't just like random rap shit that a lot of people were putting out back then, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, he had a good message and shit. And then, yeah, I mean, the shit was just clever and good message. So yeah, that's why I really fucked with him. He got a good voice too, I mean. So did you like make any music or anything when you were a kid? Uh, not really. I mean, I would always be rapping in, in the lunchroom, doing beats on my hands and shit. That's kind of how I got my name, Cypher. Just always kicking freestyles and whatnot. But uh, yeah, no, I really didn't start recording till a couple years ago. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. So no just real big musical influence outside of being a yeah. fan growing up. Yeah, like I didn't have anybody in my life that was like making music or anything like that. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, so you moved out here to Texas. Uh, you were still going to school and everything when you moved out here? No, nah, I just graduated high school when I came out here. Okay, okay, okay. I did go to ACC for a little bit, but... Yeah. All right. <laughs> I didn't so go to no uh, Texas college or nothing like that. So when you first moved out to Austin, like, what were you on? Uh, I was just trying to survive, man. I came down here because it wasn't working out in Minnesota, man. I got, like, robbed by a couple of my friends. I was just doing bad shit, dealing drugs and whatnot. Uh, so, yeah, I came down here because my dad was down here helped me out a little bit and then yeah that's why I met my girl had a kid pretty quickly I probably had a kid like within two years of being down here so then yeah that shit uh, you know puts you in line real quick so how so like what did, what did it uh, how did it put you in line I mean you gotta support if you're not a deadbeat you know you gotta support your kids so I had to get a better job I was grinding it out make sure she had a good place to stay we ended up buying a crib so she you know didn't have to grow up in a little one room apartment that I was staying in so yeah we got the uh the crib out there and then yeah man i just had to keep grinding and make sure she was all right okay is that what did you just post something about that or something oh i'm buying a new house yeah yeah i saw that congratulations man yeah the housing market's crazy in austin so yeah yeah my house is worth like a couple hundred grand more than it was a few years ago so yeah i, I can believe that but it, it should keep going up too yeah it's a gamble though you gotta know you gotta pull the trigger or you can try to gamble on it Right, but like you're doing something for your family, so it ain't, yeah. it's not just necessarily all about making the flip off of it. Yeah, yeah, we want to get in a bigger house anyway, but... Okay, so you've been here in Austin for a while. Were you a fan of the local hip-hop scene in Austin before you decided to start rapping? Yeah, uh, the League, League of Extraordinary, Extraordinary uh, uh, what's his name? Dominican J, yeah, man, big fan of Dominican J, fucking with all of them. Uh, 
uh, died all them. And then yeah, man, uh, Kenobi, he's one of one of the first dudes I met when I came down here. I think you might know him. Yeah, I saw that y'all got a song together. Yeah, we got a whole collab tape. So yeah, I met him. He was actually working at the same sub sandwich shop I was when I first came down here. That's how I met him. Nice. And then yeah, so he was always on me. He's probably one of my bigger musical influences. He was always on me to get into it because we'd always rap and shit when we were drunk and whatnot. Okay, okay. Yeah. So for you, it was still just mostly just freestyle and having fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you met Kenobi and everything, and then is that so that he's the really the one that kind of introduced you to the the ATX hip hop scene? Yeah, I met him, and then uh, we, when we were rapping together, uh, Launchpad Studios reached out to us on Reverb, and they were like, "Hey man, y'all need a a place to record? Come here." So then we met him, we met Ty Gibson, we prepared for the plug, and then just from there, it's just been it's been on. Oh yeah, Ty, that's my boy. Oh yeah, good guy. This yes. guy, he'll take care of you. Yeah, he helped me roll out my first tape. Well, actually, my only tape. Okay, okay. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, it's called Choice Beats on Loose Leaf. So it's basically, you know, I'm just trying to say it's like, got dope sound and dope lyrics is what I was trying to put out there. Uh, it's just a little EP. It's got five tracks. Did a couple videos. Uh, ended up getting Nez the Villain to hop on one. That's Rap Appetite. Uh, you can check that one out. It's pretty dope. And then, yeah, just five singles on there. And, uh... I got a, another video on there called uh, Sunshine with him, and then also one called Boom Blah, which is the, the intro track with Kenobi. Okay, nice, nice, nice. All right, so let me backtrack a little bit. Met Kenobi, still freestyling at that point, but when did you start, when, like, when did it change in your mind? Like, all right, I'm not gonna, well, do you write your music down or do you still just freestyle? Yeah, I write it all down. Okay, yeah. so when did that switch come and why? It was, it's pretty much Kenobi to be honest he because we always be flowing he thought I was good I guess and he was always on me he was really doing the music thing mm -hmm. so he was always on me and then yeah eventually uh, once I had enough money and everything was cool uh, we, we cut that first tape together it's called Dark Days Neon Nights um, so yeah it's all me and him are on each track and uh, yeah man he, he did a lot of the hooks and whatnot and then uh, cut in some of my verses it's pretty dope tape man okay dope 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 and yeah, it's like, uh, man, I don't even know when you first popped up on the scene, but I, I'm sorry, I'm seeing your name everywhere. Yeah. I'm trying to work, man. Right, right. So the, is that like deliberate or are you just kind of naturally just kind of getting around like your name is traveling like that? I don't know, man. I, I think it's deliberate. I mean, I'm definitely, I'm here doing doing this interview, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make moves, trying to, trying to get my name out there. Um, but yeah, I think some people are just fucking with me too. So it's kind of both. Nice. Say. Yeah. Alright, so who are some of the people uh, on the ATX scene that you've met that you uh, have collaborated with or want to collaborate with? Uh, G Smith, rocking with him. Uh, also, uh, The Rock. I'm going to actually go to his studio on Saturday. Oh, that's dope. Um, Jason, or Jason the Professor from CHHK. Also dope. I got a track coming with him that we haven't cut yet. Uh, I'm trying to work with Bars Robinson. We haven't found the right track yet, but we've been talking. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm probably, I'm probably working with some other people, too. I'm leaving out. But I can't. I don't know. I just be trying to work. It'd be like that. Any producers you working with? Yeah, I work with, with this man right here. <laughs> when T2Ls. I work with him. Uh, I'm trying to think. Any other producers, producers? No, I don't think. That's pretty much the only one. I mean, I got a couple beats from uh, Fetty Knox, but I haven't, haven't cut a track to him yet. Yeah, Fetty's crazy. Yeah. Okay, nice, nice. Okay, so... How do you feel about the Austin hip hop scene? Because I know from the time that I've been here, everyone has mixed feelings about the Austin hip hop scene. Some people work together. Some people only work with certain people. But like, what's your perspective and what's your experience? I think that's the main thing of why I kind of got a little traction right now is because I just work with so many people. You know, I'm I'm just out there working, but yeah, I did hear hear a lot about that that uh, they, everybody kind of talks about trying to collab and work together, but then they don't really they're not really about it. Mm -hmm. So I heard a lot about that, and yeah, I think a lot of people see me just collabing with everybody, and it's kind of I wouldn't say opening the door, but you know, kind of giving them the motivation to do it too, because I've been seeing a lot of the same people that I work with, been working with each other and, and whatnot. So yeah, right. My motto is work, you know, work with whoever you think's dope. Yeah, that's a I ain't gonna lie, like that's exactly what works for me. Like uh I heard on the scene. Like I just started showing love. Yeah. Like I do a good performance, people come show me love, I show the same love back. Showing up to people's shows, you know, really showing that support, it goes a long way. Yeah. And like being genuine with people. I was gonna say, as long as it's not fake, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. People people pick pick up on that real quick. All right. 
Um, have you thrown any shows yourself? Thrown a show or just done a show? Thrown any. No, I haven't thrown any, but yeah. I do got the, the festival coming up, Bars, Jars, and Cigars. Okay. So, yeah, I was like I said, I was working with all these artists, and uh, I was like, man, I bet I could throw a dope show together, and I made a post, mm-hmm. and it was like 200 rappers. were like, yeah, do it, do it. Okay, maybe that's what I saw. Cause I was, I, yeah, I was like, you, you getting some traction, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm putting that together. It's in Weberville. It'll be next June. And, yeah, I got a bunch of artists. You can check it out. It's Bars, Jars, and Cigars.com. Or if you see any of my social medias, there'll be links all over it. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be a river flow. And I got 50 artists. It's gonna be dope, man. Nice, nice. Okay, so what are your plans as far as your music? Like, what are you trying to accomplish? I mean, everybody's trying to make it. That's the end mm-hmm. goal, right? But uh, uh, right now, yeah, just working with whoever I find out there that's dope. I do got a lot of collabs coming up, and uh, I don't really know, man. Uh, I mean, everybody wishes they they break and you know get get on the radio and make all that money, but for right now, man, I'm just trying to you know make dope music pretty much. Okay, okay. Now, how would you describe yourself as an artist? Uh, man, I'm 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 lyric fo- focused. I mean, a lot of people just kind of got a vibe. That's kind of the popular thing today, you know. Just get a good beat and a good vibe. Say a couple words. I like to have the vibe as well and swagger in there as well. But I like to you know hit you with some lines where you. Each time you hear the song, you're hearing something else. Oh, I didn't know you said that. You know, that's my type of right. type okay. of jam. Okay. And then, uh, how do you feel about your stage performance? I haven't performed too many times. I'd say maybe like five times. Mm-hmm. Um, first couple were rough. Probably for most people, they are. Uh, but I've been getting a little better. You know, I don't rap over my lyrics, nothing like that. So, uh, they're, they're good, genuine performances. I'm not out there, you know, <laughs> just just rapping over this the track that you can hear anywhere. Uh, you but know, yeah. I, I respect that, and I, I feel like there's so uh, few of us that respect that. Like, yeah. I feel like we know a lot of people because we're like we're hip hop heads, you know, yeah. the whole rapping on the track thing. But it's crazy, like I don't know people's performances. I pay a lot of attention to performances, but I've also seen some people do really great performances with a not even just a backing track, like the whole track, just but, the whole track. But it is like when you get up there and there's no words. Maybe just like some ad libs in the background, and yeah. you can just spit and really show your fans, I can do this. Yeah, because you're not singing or nothing. I mean, what are you giving them if you're just talking over your track? You know, you mm-hmm. gotta give them a performance. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So, do you have any other shows coming up? Yeah, I'm at the Nocturnal on the 29th. A little club down there. I guess it's a Halloween type show, right mm-hmm. before Halloween. I don't even know who else is on it right now. I'm waiting for the flyer, but. That's here in Austin? Yes, sir. Nice, nice, nice. And then what um, projects or singles can we expect? That's right. Like I said, I got a, the one with Jason. That one's called The Craft. Okay. Cella Black's on that one, too. She's going to sing the hook. Uh, I got The Sound of Hustle with The Rot. Uh, I just dropped... Uh, what was it called? I just dropped... Oh, uh, yeah. Pocket Full of Dreams. I don't know why I couldn't think of it. With G-Dollar. That one's dope. Pocket Full of Dreams. Tell me about that. Uh, so yeah, I was working with Nez, and he kind of runs in the same circle with G Dollar. G Dollar is dope, man. He's got a lot of one-liners, and uh, I heard this beat. It's kind of like a high, high pitch, kind of like I don't know, almost like an orchestra gospel sample in the background. And uh, yeah, I just hit him up, man. And the song's kind of just you know just about trying to make it, you know, and just grinding it out in this music game. Uh, yeah, I, pu- I put that together. I hit him up. He wanted to do it, and yeah, we cut it. It's a dope track. Okay. Okay. Now, before we wrap things up, I'm always big on like speaking things into existence. So, what is something that you want to manifest for your career in Austin? I say within the next two years. I want this festival to become a, a Austin staple. You know, I want it to be a yearly thing. I want it to be a big deal because you know these uh, ACL and South by Southwest. Almost nobody really fucks with them anymore. They, they're too commercial. I mean, a lot of people will go to them because it's the thing to do. But I want that actual, real, independent, you know, festival uh, show that any artist can, you know, can probably get on as long as they talk to me and get on it and do their thing and, you know, get a, a larger crowd out there. Okay. Because a lot of these shows, you get on them with these bigger artists, but, you know, nobody's there for you type deal. You know, only 10 people in the audience are there, you know, at the beginning of the show when the door opens. I'm trying to give small art is a bigger platform so yeah to become a staple and everybody's kind of waiting on that thing to come around every year that'd be dope nice all right and uh one more time tell us when that festival is going to be and where we can get more info on it that's uh bars jars and cigars it's actually bars jars 
the letter N, cigars. They're all, all the plurals are Z's. So bars, jars, and cigars with Z's.com. Or you can just go to any of my, uh, any of my socials. My website's atxcypher.com, and there's links to it there. It's in Weberville, Texas, at Texas Music Ranch. There's a river float. It's got the Colorado River right by it. Yeah, we're going to have 50 ATX artists there, man, doing their thing. There's going to be graffiti artists there, too. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of vendors, a lot of dope shit. Okay, now before we go, I want you to let everyone know who you are because I see that there's a lot of talk about your name and that like, <laughs> confuses people, I guess. I think it's pretty dope. Um, I know you made a post about it once and I, yeah. I talked to Chadell about it, but yeah, explain your name for the people so they can stop asking you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man, it's really just Cypher, but you know, there's a lot of artists out there with the same Cypher name. So I went ahead and put ATX on there because, you know, I'm just repping the city. And so, yeah, a lot of people misconstrue it. Like, I'm trying to say I'm the best freestyler or I run every cypher in Austin. But it's nothing like that. I'm just, I go by cypher and I'm repping ATX, you know, trying to put ATX on the map. Man, I like it, bro. I like ATX cypher. Like, that's <laughs> dope. It <laughs> sounds odd because I was like, I don't know. Because, like, you know, like now everybody got the... NLE yeah. or the this 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 yeah. and everything you know what I'm saying but I was like ATX like, that's dope I'm like man I'm trying I'm ATX 90 <laughs> cause I man I got my career started out here hell yeah but nah yeah bro I say man I say push that ATX cypher that's dope bro hell yeah appreciate it man but cypher I appreciate you coming through hell yeah and until next time peace